Hello, I'm Liam and welcome to my June allotment tour. On the tour, I show what's growing down here, the jobs I've been doing, and what I hope to be getting up to over the next few weeks. With the good weather, it's been a really busy time and a lot's changed down here since the last tour. So let's get going. The highlights of this month's tour include the blueberries which are coming into season, the yellowing garlic which is almost ready to be harvested, the potatoes that I earthed up yesterday, the peas that are now growing up their supports, the progress of the draw French beans, the courgette plants that I have recently planted out, on this side of the bed climbing French beans, and on the other side of the bed runner beans, winter squash plants, the strawberry bed that I've just taken the first harvest from, the dahlia plants that are growing really strongly, a recently planted climbing courgette variety, the gooseberries which are really starting to swell up to full size, the fruit that's forming on the blackcurrant and redcurrant bushes, more fruit forming on the tapery plant and the loganberry plant, whilst the boysenberry plant is producing these gorgeous white flowers, some of which are already starting to form fruit, the raspberry canes that are covered in small fruit, the flower bed outside the polytunnel that has sprung into life and inside the polytunnel the tomato plants that are growing strongly. One of the most time consuming jobs over the last few weeks has been putting the nets over the fruit. The frame that I'm using for the blueberries is a repurposed trampoline base where I turned over the base that used to be holding the trampoline up. It provides a really good structure to drape the nets over. If I didn't net the blueberries all the fruit on these bushes would soon be eaten by the birds. Birds eating the fruit is one of the biggest challenges I've found down here on the plot. What happens is that the birds eat the fruit even though they're not fully ripe. In previous years I've come down to harvest the fruit only to find that all the fruit has disappeared. I've learned over the years with the blueberry bushes is that the fruit forms bigger if I come down here and give the plants a good watering once a week, especially in hot weather. The garlic that I planted in October is almost ready to be harvested. The tops of the leaves are really quite yellow. What I am pleased about is that the stems are thickening even more since the last tour. This stem here is a good example. That stem must be over an inch thick. And I think that bodes well for the bulb which is forming below ground. In next month's tour, I hope to show the results of the harvest. By contrast, the leaves of the onion plants are much greener. I've been using weed control fabric to control the weeds, but in this bed I've had a problem this year with a lot of mare's tail. If I just pick an example. So this is mare's tail. The problem is that these roots go at least a foot, and sometimes two feet or more, deep down into the ground, so it's very hard to remove in its entirety. Once I've harvested the onion bed this year, I'll give the bed a really good digging over to see if I can lift all the mare's tail out. But for this year's harvest, I'm just controlling the weeds as they grow up through the holes. It won't affect the size of the harvest, it's just giving me more work. I think it will be August before these onions are ready to be harvested. The combination of a wet spring that has left the ground really moist followed by warm sunny weather has meant that the potatoes have really accelerated in their growth over the last few weeks. Yesterday I came down to the plot and earthed the potatoes up. This is an important job to make sure that no light reaches the developing potatoes. If light does reach the potatoes it turns them green and makes them poisonous. The potatoes are looking really healthy but they still need to flower so I reckon there's probably a good six weeks, maybe more growth left before they're ready to be harvested. By contrast, the peas have been relatively slow growing, but now they're looking in good shape. I've given the plants very basic support using poles set about a metre and a half apart and twine which is strung between the poles. It's taken several weeks before the plants have started to show strong growth. But now the leaves are a lovely green colour and flowers are starting to form. Hopefully the harvest is not too far away. In the same bed I also have draw French beans. These have not been a great success. Something's got to the French beans and eaten the leaves. 
that's happened on many of the plants across the bed. These plants down here are slightly better. What I have found with French beans is that even though the first leaves are eaten, they soon throw up new leaves. So provided some leaves are left on the plant, it is possible that they'll recover. I only need a few plants to come through because they are really prolific in the amount of pods they produce. In this bed here, I have three courgette plants. Courgettes are greedy plants and I find it helps to mix in well-rotted manure or compost into the planting hole. What I also find with courgettes is that they can be eaten. My trick to help them through is to allow the plants to grow as big as possible before I plant them out into the beds. Bigger leaves are less tasty to slugs and snails and I find it helps them survive. Also when planting, I've created a shallow dip around the plants which helps with watering. What that means is when I water them, a puddle forms around the plants which helps concentrate the water to the roots. The leaves are still slightly yellow, which happened when the plants were inside the polytunnel. But they're not being eaten, which is the main thing. And there appear to be flowers forming too. The runner beans I planted out yesterday, and I'm using a wigwam structure this year. Last year the structure I put in place was too flimsy and a strong wind blew the plants over. But this wigwam structure is much stronger and it should survive the weather this year, provided that the plants can get through. This is an example of the challenge down here at the plot. Yesterday this was a perfect leaf and something's come along and taken a big bite out of it. Similar to the courgettes, what I like to do is to allow the plants to get as big as possible before planting them out. That way, even if the lower leaves are eaten, I'm hoping the speed of growth will still mean that the plant survives. This has a vertical growing stem here, with lots of leaves developing, and I'm hoping that will be enough for the plants to survive. And then next to the runner beans, I have more French beans. Now these plants here, are a climbing variety of French beans which will grow to over a metre in height. I'm growing these in a similar way to my runner beans and I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. One of my favourite crops to grow down here on the plot is winter squash. I've got three varieties and I planted these in a similar way to my courgettes, providing them a rich planting hold. The one difference is that I'm allowing plenty of space between the plants. The courgettes I planted spaced about a metre apart, whilst the squash are almost two metres apart and I've allowed plenty of space around them for growth. As I mentioned in the introduction to the video, I'm also growing a climbing variety of courgette. The variety is called Shooting Star, and in expectation of growth, I'm using this trellis that I've repurposed for my garden at home. Now, I've allowed about a metre and a half worth of growth when the plant's this small, it's less than a foot high at the moment. That seems quite ambitious, but I'm looking forward to seeing what happens over the next few weeks. In last month's video, I talked about transplanting leeks for their flowers. Since then, the plants have grown really strongly. The flower stems, if I just stand up, they're almost a metre and a half in height. This bulb here is about an inch and a half in width and I'm hoping it's not too long now until the buds start to open up. Actually, this bud here is starting to open up. It will be great to see the leeks in flower. What I've been less successful with is the perpetual spinach. To be honest, I've been disappointed with the crop. I planted it in October, hoping to be eating the spinach leaves all the way through this summer. But instead, the plants have all gone to seed. And looking at this plant here, it's also attracted black fly. Well, sometimes things work and sometimes they don't. If I do make another attempt to grow perpetual spinach, I think I'll try planting it in the spring. Perhaps the winter was too harsh for it and encouraged it to run to seed. But in between the lines of spinach, just here, it may be possible to see on the camera. If I get in here to show a closer look, I've planted some spring onion and the plants have come up. The plants are still very small, but hopefully I'll get some sort of harvest this season from the bed. In an attempt to salvage something this year, I have sown some chard in pots, 
And what I plan to do when these plants are a little larger is to dig up the perpetual spinach that I've just shown and plant the chard in their place. In addition, I grew New Zealand spinach last year and what I noticed is that these New Zealand spinach plants had self-seeded, so I dug them up and put them into pots. And like the chard, I'll put them where the perpetual spinach is currently growing. The dahlia plants that I keep at the front of my rhubarb bed are growing really strongly again this year. This is the dahlia plant that I dug up in my last allotment tour to divide, to generate new plants from. I then replanted what was left and this is the result and over the last month it's grown really, really strongly. I'm very pleased with that. It's about half the size of the dahlia that I didn't dig up. But over the next few weeks I think it will soon catch up. What I am really pleased about is that the smallest dahlia cutting that I took, I planted in this pot here. And even though it had a tiny amount of tuber on it, I put it in this pot here just to see if it will grow, and it has. It just shows that you need a very small amount of tuber to grow a dahlia plant. Now that it's germinated, that should go on to form a full-size dahlia plant over the next few weeks. The rhubarb plant itself is really large now, almost two metres wide and over a metre tall. But now it's June, I've stopped harvesting it for the plant to retain its strength. Next to the rhubarb plant, I have my strawberry bed. If I just stand back here to show it better. The strawberries are in season now. And a few moments ago, I started picking the first strawberries from it. And this is the first harvest here. I hope that's coming out well on the camera. I'm really pleased with that. Perhaps not the largest strawberries. I think I'm going to give the plants a more consistent watering from now on. But what I have noticed is that the leaves of the plants are being eaten. I think they're sawgrass caterpillars causing the problem. What I need to do is to come down here and go plant by plant to remove the tiny caterpillars. I've got three gooseberry bushes inside my fruit cage and the fruit are now looking really good. If I just lift up this branch, I hope that's coming out well. But they're not ready yet and compared to previous years, it is a later harvest. That's the cold spring taking effect. The black currant bush is really springing back to life. It's generated so much growth. But when I pull the leaves back to look for currants, there are a few trusses, but much less in previous years. The red currant bush, on the other hand, seems to be doing much better. The fruit's quite small, but there are plenty of currants. Let me just look at a few more branches. Just inside there, there are more. To be honest, there are less trusses than in previous years. Maybe the late frosts have affected the harvest. Having looked at the fruit on all the bushes now, I reckon the harvest is maybe 25% smaller than last year. One thing I need to keep a constant eye on on the fruit bushes here is for this bindweed that is growing. Here's an example. What I try and do is to catch it as early as I can, but I've missed this one. I'm now going to go down to see where it's coming from and rip it up. New for this year is the net I put over the rows of hybrid berries, the Tabry, Loganbury and Boysenbury, and my raspberry canes. In previous videos, I've shown the frame that I put up to cover the beds that are also useful to provide the support for the canes. And over the last week, I put up this netting it's an anti-bird netting and my trick with it is to buy a net which is larger than the space that I wanted to cover because I don't want to stretch the net for it to cover the frame. The height of the frame is about 2 metres and I bought a drop of about 4 metres and that's almost been perfect to do what I wanted it to do which is to drop to the ground with plenty of slack. It's certainly doing the trick at keeping the birds and squirrels out. Now inside the net, the plants are covered in tiny fruit. But similar to the currants and the gooseberries, the harvest this year is going to be really late. 
This time last year, I was taking containers full of fruit off these bushes. What is good to see is that the new canes are growing strongly. I'm hoping this is coming out well on the camera. Oh, this is interesting. Tapery canes are normally really smooth and spine free, but every now and then the plant will throw out a cane covered in spines. I hope it's possible to see this, but there are hundreds of spines on this cane. As I've got plenty of canes, I'm going to prune that one away to avoid damaging my fingers. It's a similar story with my loganbury plant. Plenty of fruit forming, but relatively small in size. But what I'm most pleased about is my boysenbury plant. This is only a year old and what that means is that last year I had maybe a handful of fruit off the plant but this year there are hundreds of flowers on it and it seems to be setting fruit. And like the boysenbury plants it's looking a great year for raspberries. The plants are covered in bunches of fruit. Bees are loving the plants this year. One of the things I didn't mention earlier when I was talking about the net is that by using bird netting it allows plenty of space for the bees to be able to get into the fruit cage which is important for cane crops like tayberries, loganberries and raspberries. Like with my blueberry plants I find that raspberries benefit from plenty of watering to get the largest fruit. Outside the polytunnel I have these tiny tiny chilli plants I'll be growing the chilli outside the polytunnel. They're in a really warm position. It'll be interesting to see whether this summer's hot enough for the plants to really grow well. Also outside the polytunnel are these young leek plants that I sowed a few weeks ago. They've germinated really well. And when they're a little bit larger and I've got space in the bed, so I'll then plant them out. The flower bed outside the polytunnel is now growing really quite strongly. It shouldn't be too long now for the first flowers. This plant here looks a good example. I can actually see a, a flower bud forming there. There are also some bulbs coming through. And right in the middle, just here, a cosmos. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that develops. And then to finish the tour inside the polytunnel where I have my tomato plants. As with the fruit, it's been a slow start this year. I position the plants around the edge of the polytunnel to give each plant plenty of light. And then I use twine suspended from the frame of the polytunnel to support the plants as they develop. The plants are looking really good this year, just behind where they would be in previous years. Fruit is starting to form on the trusses. That's great to see. And more fruit, which is forming over here. It can get really warm inside the polytunnel at this time of year. The temperature reaching over 50 degrees. The most important thing I find on hot sunny days is that it's essential to come down here and make sure that the plants get a good watering at least once a day. Because the polytunnel is so warm, I've moved the seedlings outside the polytunnel. I've got some broccoli and some cauliflower plants here, ready to be planted out. As well as some French beans and runner beans on standby, just in case the plants in the bed do get eaten. And also a little tray of lettuce. I'll prick out the seedlings and plant them in any space I have down at the plot, or even at home in pots. And that's it. That's the end of the tour. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please let me know by hitting the like button or leaving a comment. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the YouTube channel in the usual way.